Over to you, Sai. Thank you very much. Uh, I think it's um, best if I start off just by uh, drawing your attention to some topical and recent Ofcom documents which you can find on our website. On the, uh, on the 4th of July, we published, uh, this is very topical actually, a list of the services that meet the coverage criteria for the delivery of so-called listed events uh, under the 1996 Broadcasting Act. And uh, you'll know about these events. Category A events are such as the Wimbledon Finals, of course, uh, this weekend. I was glued to the TV for that. Uh, and the FA Cup Final. Those must be carried live on free-to-air channels. Uh, category B events, such as the Six Nations... I'm sorry, there's some rugby fans here, aren't there? But uh, Six Nations Championship and the Cricket World Cup, once again, Sunday afternoon, uh, those matches which involve the home nations can be shown on pay TV, provided su sufficient secondary coverage, such as the highlights or delay broadcast, etc., is made available to free-to-air free channels. And the value of such listing has been amply demonstrated in press coverage, uh, I think, over the weekend. Uh, the excitement, uh, certainly at Lord's uh, on Sunday. Um, can I just point out that Ofcom's role in this is not to decide what type of events are listed, but actually simply to, to, access, to assess the channels that actually can carry those events. It's Parliament that decides on the uh, events that are actually chosen for those particular categories. But also on the 4th of July, the second, the second one of these here, we published a statement on the changes to the uh, EPG code, which requires prominence for public service broadcasting channels. And that's a requirement, that's a legislative requirement uh, that on EPGs, that, that, that the public service broadcast channels and their content are prominent. Um, the underlying legislation doesn't carry, currently cover VOD. And so we all have also published our recommendation, the third one on the list here, we've also published our recommendations to government for a new framework which will also allow us to keep PSB TV content prominent in an online world. Uh, this is all supported by evidence in a report that we commissioned from MTM. So all of these documents are available uh, online for you to see. Finally, um, this is a trailer really for the 18th of July, two days time. Uh, we commissioned a report by Cambridge consultants on the use of AI, artificial intelligence, in online content moderation. And this will be published this coming Thursday, as I say. Uh, you can look at their website or you can look at ours for that. So I, I'd like to just pick up uh, a key theme uh, in these documents. And we're all very aware of the order of prominence in a traditional EPG. I mean, we've seen it already. Uh, you, you showed us BBC One, BBC Two, ITV, Channel Four, Channel 5, but you know, that, that EPG is gradually maybe not so prominent itself. It's moving uh, around the, uh, from the home page. And today's platforms are more complex and viewers are presented with other ways of uh, accessing content, uh, content on screen icons, uh, even the dedicated buttons on remote controls that take a direct leap to pages from a particular provider. And selections of VOD content which might have a relationship to the interest, as, as, as Peter Doherty has just explained, to the interest of the consumer, but of course also maybe to the platform. And I think you, you alluded to that in, in what you were saying. And a natural question must be, uh, why have I been presented with this particular list of items? Um, and of course, when driven by voice, we didn't, I don't think we mentioned voice so far, when driven by voice where there can be only one answer, um, produces, of course, only one selection. We, we do need to, answer, to understand the answer to the why question. And that's really something that is alluded to and picked up very clearly in, in these, uh, these documents. Our, our report by um, Cambridge Consultants, which is going to be published on Thursday, um, reveals that the same basic explicability question, I'm glad I managed to say that, the explicability question is as important in the use of AI uh, in content moderation. So here, for example, it's very interesting, you see two images, um, both 
to our eyes, are of a police van. I mean, you can all see a police van, can't you, in both these pictures. The image classifier system uh, has been trained and recognises the left image here with 85% certainty as a police van. The right image has been modified using a generative adversarial network. And to our eyes, or well, certainly to my eyes anyway, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a, a police van there, right? But the same, I'm sorry, I've moved away from the microphone. Uh, the same uh, network sees this with a 98% certainty as a typewriter. Anyone seeing a typewriter? <laughs> Not, you haven't had a drink yet, have you? <laughs> That's what it is. Um, it's interesting, isn't it? The question we naturally want to ask about this is why did the classifier make the decision that it did? Why did it see that as a typewriter? And is it actually recognising the things that we do when we see a police fan? Is it really recognising a police fan or is it recognising something else? And actually, strangely enough, in the area of content moderation, these questions turn out to be surprisingly difficult to answer. So in both content list preparation, I was the list of items that, that, that Peter Doherty was talking about, and in content moderation, we, we should surely be able to understand and to be confident that an AI system or any other technology is, about, is making appropriate decisions. So the question I'd like to ask is, are we really concerned about our actions being recorded? Is it the recording of our actions or about why they've been recorded or the reasons for the set of choices that might be presented to us that really is a concern. And you know, if we are concerned about our actions being recorded and about why they've been, then we should probably also be very concerned about what governs the creation of the lists of the sets of choices that are presented to us. And to illustrate that, I, I'd like to talk about Oyster. Now, I think, I think there's some people from TFL here, is that right? Thank you. Um, data gathered from us is often, often very benign uh, and, of course, is subject to data protection law. We've talked about data protection law. You know, we're subject to data protection law. When we gather information from stakeholders, we are subject to law. We, we say why we want the information. We have to use it for that purpose. Um, our Oyster cards, I'm presuming here, um, already let TFL know where we get on and where we get off. I mean, it's great to know. If I was planning a rail network, in fact, it goes back to the telephone um, systems we were talking about earlier. Um, if I was getting on and off, I, want, I think that's useful information to know where people are travelling from and to. But Shashi Virma, who is your, your CTO, um, the man who introduced the Oyster card, uh, said recently at a talk that one of the benefits of providing Wi-Fi on the uh, underground system, you did know there's Wi-Fi in the underground system, is that not only can they know where you got on and where you got off, but how you went between them. Now, that's really interesting. And, and when you think about it, if I was trying to plan a rail network, that is really, really, really super useful information. And he, in fact, said that, uh, that the route, for example, between Waterloo Station and King's Cross. Now, you, you, you have probably haven't got a map in your pocket, but if you look at one later, he says that there are 26 different ways of getting between those two stations. 26. Now, what that, it's interesting to think about what that tells you. Is it telling you that the map's complicated? Is it telling you, what is it telling you about? That's, that's a really interesting piece of information. Fascinating. Utterly fascinating. So try looking at an underground la map later and work out what those routes might be. So on the contrary, uh, the production of a personalised list of potential content choices might not be quite so benign. Uh, it could, might be, but it might not be, as the order and positioning of the options will have a demonstrable effect on the selection outcome, as we've, as we've heard. So it's clearly important. So perhaps I could leave you uh, with a thought. Uh, now, does anyone recognise this man? I'm going to give you a clue in a minute. Right? No? It's a typewriter. It's a typewriter. <laughs> You've got it. <laughs> That's a great answer. <laughs> uh, right, here's a clue. There's a sound. It's a sound you haven't heard for years, is it? Isn't it? 
this is this is Stroger, man who uh, invented the automatic telephone exchange. Uh, it actually, it was exactly 130 years ago this year that he invented it in 1889. Now, do you, I don't know if you know about Stroger, but Stroger was in fact an undertaker. Very interesting, isn't it? You know, an undertaker inventing the telephone exchange. Why did he do that? The motivation for the invention was this, that the belief and perhaps the fact that his business was losing clients to a competitor whose wife <laughs> was the telephone operator. <laughs> right? So you can imagine, they, they call the exchange, so I want to please speak to Mr. Stroger, and she, knowing he's the under, undertaker, and she puts them through to her husband instead. Um, I don't think I need to tell you the parallels. Um, so we've got to be clear uh, uh, as we move forwards that we are actually being open and transparent. We understand why we are being offered the things that we're being offered. Uh, as Peter Doherty said, there's a, there's a huge world of content. It's really important we have tools to actually help us to find the things that we want. But it's also important that actually that is done in a fair uh, way. So Ofcom uh, has an interest in making sure that as we move forward to this online world that actually th these things are more open, they're more transparent, and we actually have prominence for our public service broadcasters and their content in that world too. I think I'll leave it there. Thank you very much. <laughs>